Okay, guys, I uh, hope everybody is doing well. And it looks like we got our head back here. And it uh, took about three weeks for the machine shop to get it all done. They had a lot of garages they had to get out first. And I was in no big hurry. It's not, it's not like we actually need the car. So anyway, to give you an update, what they did is uh, all the valves have been replaced. You know, we got our intake valves over here. Okay, and then we have an exhaust valve over on this side. And when you first looked at it, it looked like it was just maybe one valve guide that was split. Turns out it was several. Uh, fortunately, I went ahead and I bought all the valve guides anyway, so all the valve guides have been replaced. The valve seats, they were okay, no problem there. It's got uh, valve seals, they've all been replaced. Uh, there was a little bit of pitting you know where the coolant had actually attacked the uh, the deck here and so the, it went out and uh, had to do a little uh, aluminum welding on it and then it had to get uh, cleaned up a little bit as far as I'm taking off a little bit five thousandths is what he took off so now this here is nice and flat and uh, nice and cleaned up Let's flip it up and show you the other side of the here uh, this is what I want to talk about right here, but I'll just give you a shot also what's going on. And if you look, you can see that all of the distances from here, from the top of the valve spring retainer up, you can see they all are the same distance. Okay, that'll give you an idea if you're just taking a look at it. You can tell too by looking up at the top, you know, once you get your camshafts out before you pull the head. Uh, I showed it in one of the previous videos about where they're actually further down, you know, signifying that the valve is actually open when it should be closed. Uh, <clears throat> now getting back to this right here, this is the back, this is the back of the head, okay? And this is where the EGR assembly, uh, plate assembly, I guess you would say, bolts to right here. Well, there's a gasket that goes right here. Now, let me show you the old gasket. Now when I took this old, when I took this assembly off on this end, this here, of course, you know, it broke, right? Well, I figured it's no big deal, just get another one, all right? And this thing will actually kind of go, I think it's actually like this right here, okay? And then the assembly will go back over it. This part right here is going back into the engine block. We'll see that later once we put it all back together. But the point I'm getting ready to make here is, when you buy, this one here is a Felpro gasket, head gasket set. Now, this is for 2006. Now, what you're going to get <clears throat> is this right here. Now, you can see that this, very similar, except you, you don't get this made with it. I don't know. I guess maybe for a 2004 or older car, this being the 2006, turns out that gasket doesn't work. So, you got to get another gasket. Well, guess how much this gasket right here is? Five, seven bucks? No. This thing is $100 for this one gasket. And this is off of eBay. I'm, I didn't even take a look to see what it would be from the dealership. But anyway, there it is. If you guys got a 2006, so I think maybe the 2008, this is what it's going to take. And even if you're very careful trying to take this thing off and, you know, the thing just split in two when I took it off. If you remember, part of it was stuck onto the other part right up here. So I had to get another one. Just, uh, just so you be aware of that. Also, you'd probably be interested in uh, seeing the valves. I had the machinist to, you know, save the valves so you guys could see what they look like. You can see some of them, you see how they're leaning over, like this one right here. I'll give you a shot of that one. You can see how, how bad that looks. Okay. And uh, I don't know, it's just this one here. It's got a slight bend to it. it may be hard to see, but it is being a little bit. Uh, let's check this one here. Yep, yeah, that one's got a slight bend to it also. This one, let me show you, let me show you this one here. Here's another one. Okay. 
But let me show you my favorite. This one right here. Now this was on the, this is the intake valve that was on the number one cylinder. That is, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Just see that valve bit like that. Anyway, so it pretty much damaged most of them. I think it was 11 of them, what I had counted. There's another one that's bent. And, you know, you get that many valves bent, it's just, well, go ahead and replace them all. The valves, the guides, you know, when you get some kind of damage like that, you know it's going to put some, put some stress on the side of the valve guides. You know, maybe the worst case, uh, well, let's say the least case, maybe it's just going to wallow it out where it pushed it off to the side, or maybe even split for the worst case. But, you know, they, they weren't that much. I think they were like 450 a piece. So... 16, you know, about 65, maybe 65 to 70 dollars for the valve guides. So now we're ready to get this joker back together. Okay. Uh, right now, what we we'll, what I'm going to show you is uh, the, the top of the the block here is cleaned up. Uh, just to let you know, some people like to use rotary tools and uh, things of that sort to clean, but being old school, I like to just. Do the old fashioned way, take some time, get in there, you know, do it by hand. And uh, I ain't going into detail, you probably can figure that out if you're not. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there, or if you want to know what I did, and you know, just give me a, send me a question, comment, or whatever, and uh, I'll go over that with you. Um, right now I got it up at top dead center. And one thing or two now, if you uh, guys want to do this, uh, when these valves hit the top of the piston, Look now, you can see there's no cracks. I made sure everything looked fine there. But these here valve reliefs, right here on this edge, you may can see it right there. And there was a little bit right here. But when the valves hit and pressed down into it, there was a little sliver of aluminum. So I took a jewel uh, file and I took and knocked that down, knocked it down over here. And there was one over here. And I think this one over here had a little bit also. And also, if you look right here, the exhaust valves hit. Just barely touched it. And so I took the jewel file, knocked those down, made it flat. And I believe also down here on the number two cylinder, down here on this two piston, uh, you can see where the exhaust valves just nicked into it. There's one right there, and there's one right there. Okay, so that's cleaned up. Over here on the front of the engine, okay, over here on the front of the engine, uh, while this thing was sitting, this here started rusting up. So I've cleaned this up. That's all looking pretty good now. And also, there was a little bit of rust in here. I want to make sure you get this cleaned up pretty good because right in here, this is where the O-ring is going to sit for the oil. Uh, water pump rather and so you want to make sure all that's cleaned up good too So I think we are in good shape and we are ready to put this thing back together All right, here's the new head gasket. This is from uh, fail pro. It's a perma torque type gasket uh, It's got a seal it built in it. Uh, it's a multi-layer steel uh, Biggest thing is you don't have to go back and retorque the head bolts after this thing warms up like some you have to do so that's what I like. I like to do it one time. I don't want to mess with this thing anymore. One thing I just want to point out is that uh, if you look, it does have up here top, most of the head gaskets, they do have a top road on them. So you want to be sure that this is going up like so. Make sure also that you, uh, your dial locating pins are in place, okay? And uh, I know some people like to spray copper spray and this kind of stuff. The manufacturer, I looked into it, even talked to an application engineer. He said, do not put any kind of spray sealant of anything. I like to say the sealant is already built in the head gasket. Uh, going to make sure your top of your deck here is, you know, clean, dry. Just put it on. And we'll come back and we'll set the head right on, right on top. Okay, now once you get your gasket on, you want to take your head very carefully. And as a, what, you, what you're trying to shoot for is you're trying to get these here dial pins located. So somewhere, there's one. Yep, and then the other one is set right down. 
So, that'll give you an idea what it looks like. It's pretty much flush over here, probably oh, about a three quarters of an inch. That'll help you locate it. So that's what you got right now. Okay, one of the things you want to do where your bolts, your cylinder head bolts are going to go, this is one of them right here, is get you a little bit of oil and just put you a little bit, take your finger, wipe it around. And you want to do that for each one of them. Because what you, you, if you look at the bolt right here, and by the way, these are all brand new head bolts. Okay, remember I told you these were torque to yield bolts. You're supposed to use them one time. And you know, some people do use them. But you know, for $20 for 10 of these bolts, why well, take a chance? Because once these bolts get uh, torqued up and they are pulled and stretched into what they call the yield zone. And this is where you just pretty much put as much force on the bolt and tighten it up. And so the bolt is actually stretched. So when you go back and put them back in, the bolt is never going to be as strong as it used to be. And in some, some uh, cases, you know, the bolt can actually break when you get some, uh, a lot of stress and uh, combustion forces on it. So why even take a chance? Uh, I like to put a little bit of oil, you know, right here on the, on the washer, up on the top side rather, because we already got it down there on the bottom. And then just put a little bit there on the threads, okay? Don't need a whole lot, okay? And then you just want to kind of wipe off the excess. You just want really a, a thin film on there, okay? And then we're going to take the bolt, okay? So once we got that on there, then we'll just take the bolt. And we'll just drop him over there, okay? And you want to do that for, and by the way, Make absolutely sure that you do clean the threads in the in the in the block, because you don't need any kind of liquid. You don't want any kind of crud, any kind of garbage down in there that's going to interfere with these things. Uh, you know, tightening up. Okay. Okay. Now, once you get all of your bolts in place, get a T55 Torx bit. Now, what you want to do at this point. You just want to make sure these threads are going to be okay. Now, earlier when I did the cleaning of the threads in the block, um, I didn't want to spend forty dollars for a eleven millimeter by one point twenty five pitch uh, chaser, so I figured I'll just take the old bolts and I use that and some brake clean. Let it sit down in there. The holes, by the way, inside the deck are blind holes, meaning that they will not go all the way through inside the block. So you can fill it up with some brake clean or something like that and just let it sit for a while. Let it clean anything that's in there. Then you come back and, you know, run your, uh, run your, say, your old bolt down in there. Now my fingers are getting greasy, slippery. And uh, once you do that, then you come back and get a, take your air hose, make sure you blow all the liquid out. As you may know, liquid is not compressible. So when you start putting the bolt down in there, that liquid ain't got no place to go, so that's gonna interfere with your torque readings there. And as you can see, even with my slippery, oily hands here, I'm able to screw this thing down with no problem at all. And that's what you want. This will give us a chance to see if there's any problems at this point now before we start talking this thing up. All right, right here is the head uh, cylinder head bolt tightening sequence. Uh, if you see, this is the front of the engine. This is where the camshaft uh, connector is at. So you can see there's one, there's two. You can see the numbers for yourself there. And... Uh, Here's the, here's the tightening sequence. They say 18 foot-pounds, and you do that, do that sequence. Then you come back, you make three passes at 90 degrees. But you go through, you make one pass, same sequence. You tighten it 90 degrees, use an angle, uh, uh, angle tool here to measure degrees. You come back, you make another pass, 90 degrees. You come back, you make another 90 degrees. 
Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit different. To get up to this 18 foot-pounds, I'm going to do it in three stages. I like to kind of work my way up to anything that I torque. So I'm going to start out with five, make my sequence. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to do 10 foot-pounds. Then I'm going to finish it up with 18. Then we're going to come back, and then we'll do these uh, three passes at 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, one thing, too, what I'm going to start with, since this is a very low setting as far as... Uh, you know, the foot pounds is 5, 10, and 18. A lot of the torque wrenches you look at, say for a 3 8 drive, it's probably around 150 foot pounds. So you really want to be up there, say, in the two thirds, the three fourths of the range of the uh, torque wrench. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use an inch, one that's in inch pounds for this here small uh, settings that we got. Now this is in inch pounds, so to convert from inch pounds to go to foot pounds, you just take the measurements of inch pounds and multiply it times 12. So for example, for this here five foot pounds, all I have to do is say 12 times five is 60. That gives me 60 inch pounds. And that's what I've already got it set for. So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that first pass. Oh, and before I forget about it, I forgot to mention it, but before we put the head on, after it's all cleaned up, I actually checked the, you know, checked the deck for flatness. I put a straight edge on there. I had a one uh, thousandths inch feeler gauge, and I checked it every way, you know, pretty much every way possible. Everything looked good. I couldn't slide that uh, feeler gauge in at any point along the along that deck. So, just want to get that out of the way. So let's continue on and get this thing bolted down. All right, I'm on the last one right now. And there you go. And what we just finished up is I'm on uh, 10 foot pounds right now. So now we're gonna go to the next one and that'll finish it up at 18 foot pounds and then we'll go through our angles. Okay, okay I'm uh, finishing up the last two bolts here. This is only 18 foot pounds. What you wanna do just pull it over slow in one motion and you can see when it clicks here. Uh, one other thing too, is try to get your extension as short as possible. I think this is a two inch. A one inch would have been really great, but that's all I had. The longer you make your extension, the more this here extension might want to have a tendency to flex, so that could throw off your torque readings. So keep your extension as short as you can. Okay, I'm on the first pass of making this uh, 90 degrees. I got my angle gauge here. I got it set for zero degrees. I got my lock here to keep this here dial from moving. And it's already tight, you know, just going on this first pass. But just to show you guys, turning it 90 right there. So that's 90. And now we're going to go to the next bolt which is number five. So he's gonna be over here. Okay. Let me get this thing zeroed again. All right. Got a zero. The zero's over here. And my 90 is right there. And let's go ahead and pull them on over. Okay, 90 degrees on that one. And let's see, now we got number six, which is up here. So let's take him, move him up to here, find my spot to where he'll drop down. Okay, now let's find my zero. Okay, let me get a little bit of light so I can see. Okay, a little light right there. Coming up on zero. Yep, this makes it a little more aggravating doing this here, finding the angle here. And 90 degrees is right over here. 
So let me pull that bolt on over. And there's 90 degrees. Okay, that was number six. Now number seven, as you can see, is right here. So let's take him. And we'll probably have to shift him down a little. Let's put him right there. Number seven is right there. Let's move him back to zero. Lock him down. And let's pull the bolt until the pointer gets all the way over to 90. Okay. Now, let's go down to number 8. We'll stick him right down in there. Let's find my zero, which is right there. Now you guys might can come up with something, you know, make a little protractor. I've seen some people, they printed it out, drew it up and print out, uh, you know, an indicator on there. Or you can not probably eyeball it, you know. Okay, my 90 degrees is over here. So let's go ahead and pull them over. <clears throat> There's 90 degrees. Okay, now let's go back over to number 10 which is right down here. Okay, I'm gonna borrow the light a little bit. Okay, there's my zero, line them up. Okay, and then we're gonna pull him over. Okay, let me find my 90 right there, okay. A little more, right there. Okay, and then one more bolt to go on this sequence. Now mind you, this is only the first pass that we've just done 90 degrees. We've got to go through this two more times, each, each sequence being 90 degrees. And you don't want to pull this thing all over and say 270 degrees because the idea is you do 90 degrees and you let the bolt relax and sort of uh, flex a little bit. Uh, and then you come back and then you go back with another 90 degrees. And then you go back, then you do another 90 degrees. And then at that point, if we haven't given out and trying to turn these bolts, then we'll be done. So let me get this last bolt for this last sequence here. Let me get them on zero. Okay, let me borrow the light a little bit. Now I can see the gauge here. There's my zero right there. Okay, zero is here. 90 degrees is right where my finger's at. So let me pull him on over. Okay. Gotta get some more. There, 90 degrees. Okay, we've all, we've gone through the first pass of 90 degrees. Now we gotta go back, repeat the sequence. We start back here on one, and we'll turn this bolt 90 degrees. Then we go to two, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And we keep doing that till we get that sequence done. And when that sequence is done, we got one more pass to go where we make 90 degrees. And then the head bolts are done. Okay, so I'll catch you guys in the next step. So you see what I'm going to be doing. So it's a little bit time consuming, but you take your time, you should be all right. Okay, I'm on the third pass now, and I'm on bolt number two, and, and you know, turning it 90 degrees. It definitely gets a little bit stout, but it's still manageable. I just want to show you guys. Oh, like I said, and I still got 10 more degrees to go. So you got to put some, you got to put a little bit of strength into it. So 10 more degrees. Ugh. 
Okay, that's 90 degrees. All right, now we're up to number three, which is over here. And so you can find my zero. Okay, my zero is right, right there. So here's my zero pointer, and I gotta go all the way to right here, 90 degrees. So let's see what we can do. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, 90 degrees. So, from you guys hearing me grunting and huffing and puffing, that probably give you, <laughs> I give you a little bit of idea about how tight these bolts will be. But, you know, get your half inch pull bar. It's not too bad. I mean, you gotta put a little bit into it, but you can still turn it as you see, as I was doing here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll finish up these here uh, bolts, get them tightened up. I think we'll wrap this here video up and uh, then we'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, so you guys have a good one, and we'll see you later. Okay, bye-bye.